Yeah, then let's start. So for everyone uh, who joined us, um, we are very uh, happy to welcome you for our webinar today. The topic is how to pitch for more SEO budget. We are looking forward to give you some best practices and share our experience with you. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to write them down in the chat. Um, we will answer them at the end of uh, the webinar. So we will have first session, it's around about half an hour, where we give you some insights uh, and share the information with you. And then uh, after finishing this, you are uh, yeah, welcome to ask any question you have. So um, once again, our today's topic is how to pitch for more SEO budget. So um, we have discovered that this is a big topic for a lot of our clients uh, because budget is always short and we want to give you some tools to um, yeah, win now uh, the budget rounds and gain more budget for next year. So it's Q4, a lot of budget planning are going on. So we will very briefly introduce search metrics, uh, followed by the section how to pitch for SEO budget. I'm giving you insights related to value proposition, uh, understanding the objectives of your company, um, what are important KPIs, and then uh, building our eye and forecasting cases. So, um, introducing search metrics, uh, we have five offices. So, in the US, we have Silicon Valley and New York. In Europe, we have Berlin as our headquarter. We have London and Paris. So, uh, we have more than 220 employees, more than 100,000 users, and 8,000 brands using our uh, holistic search and content marketing platform. So, that's me this handsome guy here. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm one of the hosts today. I'm the VP of Services and Sales for the EMEA region. I have nine years of experience in sales and sales training, so hopefully I am able to provide you some actionable insights today. And this is my colleague. Yes, hello from my side. My name is Björn Beet. I'm the Director of, of Professional Services here at Searchmetrics, meaning I'm heading the SEO consultant department. Um, throughout my career, uh, I gained some experience uh, in, as an in-house in SEO in enterprise companies such as e-commerce uh, player, publishing houses or lead generation firms throughout all Europe. Cool. So um, here you have some of our customers. It's um, big brands that we serve like Zalando, eBay, Walt Disney, TripAdvisor and others of course but also mid-markets agencies, so, but these are the ones you maybe know best. So uh, what we are doing, to give you a brief update on this, the ones who not uh, know such metrics yet, um, we have um, an holistic um, platform for search engine optimization and content marketing. Of course, there's a big overlay uh, between search engine optimization and content marketing. This is what we are also covering so looking forward to give you some insights how to pitch for search engine and content marketing budgets so why search Björn? yes yeah, search is uh, very important for many many businesses especially in e-commerce when it comes to product because as we can see in the b2b market uh, nearly 92 percent of all uh, business transaction begin with search I mean, take into account that somebody in the B2C market, um, as we have seen here, 81% uh, wants to buy a coffee machine or wants to buy a car. It's not just uh, bought like this. You want to inform you, uh, yourself about a product. You want to compare the product. You want to know what the value is if you spend a lot of money. And that's why search is so important. And uh, on the other hand, not only search for the consumer is important, but rather uh, it's more important that you will be fined and you give the correct information um, and that's mainly based on, on your content you're, you're providing to the customer. Um, if we just take uh, uh, um, um, some, some, some years back, like in the, in the early 20s, uh, 1920, um, there was more, like, it was more important when you buy a product what actually it is, what kind of feature it has. Whereas at, in, in the 1960s, after the Second World War, when actually the economy increased 
again and everybody had money to actually invest in, con in consuming stuff it was more a question about the advantage of of something you're buying in, if you invest in a certain product whereas in the 2000 years um, it was much more about experience how does it feel when i have this product does it fit to my, my lifestyle does it fit to what i actually am or what i want to express uh, as my uh, uh, as a person and nowadays we see uh, with a lot of our clients it's, it's more about relationship how I, how engaged i am with a product how engaged i am with a brand that's uh, much more important and this engagement is mainly done by uh, a product like on a product level if you're the product people really like uh, to use and uh, especially when it comes to content like how do you uh, how do you um, how do you get engaged with your with, with your customer on a content level um, so that you actually can say in the end that modern marketing today is mainly focused on building and maintaining relationship to the customers um, we have a lot of uh, uh, we have, we have a lot of other stats we want to show with you. So uh, there is an, uh, a case study from Content Marketing Institute, which is really impressive. Uh, let's say because what we see there is that companies spend nearly 37 percent of the marketing budget on content, which means at the end that 63 percent of them are guessing, and they are actually not knowing uh, what uh, what what their customers want from them. And this is uh, this is really important to know. Yeah, this um, was a first setting the scene. Why is search and content important? Hopefully, you found some research that's also interesting for you to have some facts in place why you need the budget because there is a big market and big opportunity out there. But um, let's go deeper into how do I sell internally SEO and content marketing to get the budgets? What one of the most important thing are value propositions and um, to find or to name the value of something. So if we're talking about services or products, there are three things we have to consider. On the one hand side, there is a feature, there's a benefit, and there's the value out of it. So um, a feature gives you the answer to what something is or does. So what does this product do So um, or what's included in this services? Um, a benefit uh, is uh, a comparison, so uh, maybe um, SEO in comparison or compared to paid advertising has this advantages, uh, so more sustainable, whatever, so it's about the benefits, this is a good way, but most of the people, uh, especially the more specialized they are, uh, the more they talk about features and benefits instead of value, because at the end, the decision maker, the budget holder is interested in the value. So what does it do for the customer or for me? And what's the impact of this? So really, it's all about the value. And my recommendation is, if you argue for budgets, always start with the value, then come to the benefits. And then if there are questions, uh, then go to the features. But first and almost, decision makers are interested in the value that your initiatives bring to the company and to the KPIs your manager has to manage. So to give you an example, about SEO, a feature would be uh, we have an IT department or SEO managers, they build a website in a way that search engines can crawl the website well. So if you start with this and why you want to do optimization maybe on a technical level and then it's, uh, yeah, search engines can, uh, it's, uh, can, your, uh, can crawl your website better, yeah, the question is why should this be interesting for me? So more or the benefit is, yeah, maybe compared to our competitors, uh, our website will be listed uh, based on relevant search terms in search engines or in comparison to PPC, uh, we have more sustainable results um, and uh, maybe we have a lower costs per click or um, yeah, our traffic is cheaper. So then you have a comparison, then it starts to become interesting. But at the end, it's all about the value. Your manager wants to know, okay, you have an initiative in place that can increase your sales by X percent. Or if your target is uh, gaining more traffic because of brand awareness, then uh, he or she wants to see a forecasting. And how you can do forecastings, we will 
to have a separate section today for this, but please always concentrate on the value because this is so essential. Um, also very essential is to understand the objectives of a company because um, usually a company has three or four objectives per year, that's it, and then they break down this big objectives and KPIs into um, small KPIs so that they can manage their overall KPIs. And if you do not know what the company is aiming on or aiming for and what the main objectives is, maybe you don't speak the same language as the budget holders. So and there could be many different ways of objectives. It can be growth in sales, profit maximization, it could be a launch of a new product, brand awareness, etc. So it's very essential that you discover what our, our yeah, what uh, what uh, yeah, how look our um, main objectives like and what can I do to support uh, that, you know, that we hit our goals for these objectives. So brand awareness, increased traffic, if you want to have uh, maybe cost cuts or profit maximization, lower CPCs by a sustainable SEO strategy. So you think about what can you do um, that uh, brings a benefit and a value to your company. And very essential, um, SEOs pretend to talk about rankings, for example. Uh, believe in me, no decision maker or budget owner is interested in rankings because rankings is just one step. Uh, you want to have better rankings because you want to be more visible. You want to be more visible because you want to increase your SEO market share and gain more traffic and do more sales. So having rankings is just the first step. So, uh, And I've never seen a CEO going through thousands of rankings, so he's more interested in this is the input, this is the output, this is a good business decision. So this is what we're aiming for in the next slides as well. So um, work with KPIs, budget holders are interested in is very essential so that you speak the same language. So for example, we have the visibility at search metrics and yeah to be honest it's a nice indicator but um, at the end he has to transfer what visibility means to increase sales so support him in bringing this transfer um, like you have a benchmark um, you are the blue line then you have the green lines your competitors so you were a hat for years and then um, they now are close to you so maybe you want uh, to improve your SEO activities um, yeah, to um, be better than your competitor. But really interesting, for example, is something like market shares. We had such metrics offer market shares for different product groups as well. So now imagine you have different product groups um, and then you can say, okay, in product group two, we have 25% of market share and we're ahead of all our competitors. But in product group four, competitor two is the um, best performing, but it's exactly um, the product group where we have launched a new product and we want to get more brand awareness to this, so this is something we could target. So of course, once you have a search metric suite, you can um, group your products and name your competitors. We had just this sheet like this so that, um, yeah, we sh do not show um, actual numbers of a specific client of us. Or like how is the market share developing? So um, this is a German screenshot, but it's just the development of market share. So um, um, you can see the uh, market share and left and right if uh, how it's developing. If you lose or if you win market share, like the orange bubble in the upper right, it's a strong competitor winning a lot of market share. You are the black bubble, so you uh, you are a strong player at the market, a big uh, vendor, but you're losing market share. So now it would be time to have a strategy to win back the market share. So um, this is something your manager should be interested in. And this leads us to RI and forecasting. So to have this input-output relation, what do I have to bring and what uh, can I expect? So very essential is a company does not exist to save costs. This is a fact because um, if you would sink this to the end, then a company would spend zero euro, have no employees, and wouldn't build anything. So um, a company does exist to invest the available resources in the best way. So resources like manpower, budgets, etc. So now it's on you to show your company that SEO or content marketing is the best invest they can do.
So I, for example, uh, HugoBoss.com, it's of course a big brand and um, I can highly recommend for everyone to have a look at quarterly or uh, <clears throat> annual um, reviews of your company. So um, it's public, there's a link there. So they just had uh, within one year in the first quarter of each year, a 1% year over year growth. So um, I would say uh, growth insights should be one of their objectives. The EBITDA, it's uh, just uh, increased by 4%, but they were very proud of it. So, okay, cost cut and being more profitable, also interesting, fine. And um, if you read it more in detail, um, they had a negative trend in e-commerce and uh, yeah, want to grow e-commerce again. So I would say, okay, a lot of things where we can target it with SEO and content marketing even if I have a look at this so uh, I've double checked uh, just uh, with one click their visibility over the last uh, years they've lost 25% of their visibility it means that they should have 25% organic traffic less and now bring this to a business case because I'm very I'm, I'm really sure that um, who, who was they've seen charts like this a couple of times but there has not happened something yet and I would estimate to translate it I have a hypothesis this year so if you lose 25% of your organic traffic maybe show it um, and compare it with uh, paid uh, most paid advertising AdWords so we can show you okay um, Hugo Boss it's just in Germany here um, they have uh, a traffic value so the organic traffic is close to 90k worth if you compare it in AdWords so if they wouldn't have any uh, organic traffic anymore they would have to spend 90k per month in AdWords um, and my hypothesis is yeah okay just bring let bring us back the 25% of the visibility and traffic value that we have lost this would mean that it's 30k um, in traffic value that you can bring back by um, optimizing the website once again so and just in Germany and they have the same issues in uh, several countries so now imagine you can show a case to your manager saying okay um, I've seen over all countries we're acting in we have uh, we have lost over the years um, uh, a traffic value worth 100k per month and now I present you a concept, this costs you 20k per month, but, but with this 20k per month, we will win back a media budget of 100k if you compare it with AdWords. So this would be a no-brainer. This is a business case investing 20k per month, just an estimation, um, and then bringing back a media budget of 100k per month so this is what your managers want to see and I think if they see a case like this then they're very open to talk with you about budgets so if you have any questions regarding this please type them in in the chat and uh, we will follow up on this after we have uh, gone through our slides because now I will hand over to Björn once again, who will share your his experience as a former in-house head of SEO with us, how he, yeah, won budgets in the past. Yes. <clears throat> so I, uh, I'm willing to share some experience and some cases I I've been through throughout my career because I was always reporting to budget holders on a C level. Um, and now, I mean, we are in October or end of October now. Every budget round starts now uh, for the next budget. So I'm very familiar with your situation right now. So, uh, but what I have learned um, during my career is that if you don't set targets and you don't have targets, there will be no budget. That's for sure. So just one case uh, from a former employee um, employer of mine is um, uh, so we were part the SEO team actually was part of the marketing department and as a professional marketing department you're setting up a marketing campaign planning uh, in the beginning of the year so that you know uh, based on seasonality based on special events ba based on Christmas and etc PP what kind of activity you start in order to support uh, growing sales right so <clears throat> we were actually sitting uh, within this uh, marketing department planning uh, was one of our big um, uh, big things there and uh, we said okay uh, let's get involved in the overall marketing activities um, from the beginning 
and support uh, actually and the marketing department in order to uh, reach our SEO goals because our SEO goals uh, during the year was creating more content, generating external signals, made them um, backlinks or social signals or whatsoever, um, and then boost product categories with internal linking. Because um, I was working for, for this big marketplace in Switzerland, uh, so you have on the one hand you have the platform with uh, your product categories and product detail pages, and on the other hand you have um, you have to boost them somehow. So you have to generate new pages, new kind of content uh, to refresh uh, internal linking signals as well. So what we did here is we were building on the left hand side, you can see it's 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 a gift finder actually. Yeah? So we were building this um, externally, so we need a budget for it. It costs uh, a double digit um, uh, budget, um, uh, sorry, uh, six digit a budget um, and we need a budget for it so what we actually did here is we said okay you were planning uh, for Christmas to boost your, the Christmas categories we can help you uh, when we, we do a content, mar content marketing campaign and uh, internal link all the gifts we can generate to this uh, gift finder that was a, a big success as well as you can see on the right uh, um, and the example, it's a festival planner. Uh, we in, in, in Germany and uh, like every German speaking uh, country loves open air festivals, rock festivals, music festivals. And we knew uh, based on our analytics that um, beginning of February, March, so beginning of March, uh, a lot of people were actually looking for tickets, A, and B, for equipment like be it tents or be it like. Uh, um, other equipment like sunglasses and barbecues and, and all the kind of stuff. So we uh, were building this um, um, festival finder where you can put filter actually, uh, um, could put in a different genre or a particular band you wanted to see or just a price range um, or uh, you could filter for festivals which are in the near of your location, uh, etc. pp. And then you hit enter and then it actually pulls out all the festivals where the bands or genres and and, and, and and prices are covered. So, and and same here, so it was a kind of a content marketing uh, uh, campaign where we internally linked from when, so whenever there was a ticket for a specific um, uh, festival uh, spit it out, uh, we could internally link to back to the platform saying, okay, you want to have a ticket for this uh, for this festival you can buy it re directly on the platform uh, and and same with uh, all the equipment stuff uh, so it really boosted our credit categories on a, s a seasonal level so having that said it's 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 always uh, important when you want to have budget from the budget or that you set yourself targets and uh, the best case would be if you we as marketers and search marketers, we always speak about keywords, right? So it, so it would be good if you have a revenue forecast on everything you're planning and, and then actually sharing the results after you have done the campaign or have done uh, a certain project. Um, share, the, share the results uh, and then you're safe for next year to get our budget. So let's see, let's, let's, let, let's concentrate first on the objective. So my objective actually was is always been okay i want to increase traffic because that's what we do right so i had a kind of an estimation based on certain things and said okay i will be able to increase traffic by 33 percent let's let's say 33 percent by next year so this is a um, an objective i can uh, discuss with my manager and discuss with the c level and um the and then it, it's important that you put those uh, objectives in the component of the objective agreement of each employee within your team you say okay we agree on increasing the traffic by 33 percent are you okay with this yes we are okay with it those are actually the action points how we can reach this target uh, everybody signing on it and then you're done so this gives the manager and the c-level uh, kind of a feeling of secure security that you really are aiming to fulfill this uh, goal. 
what you then need to do is uh, to have a clear roadmap, right? So if you have like a campaign I just showed you, like the, the content marketing campaigns we did, so this is a big broad project. So you need to develop, to develop um, actually the front end, you need to have a database, you need to have uh, graphic design, you need to have usability, you need to have content and so on and so on. So this is actually a big, big project, which means you need a clear roadmap in order to have a good overview of every every of your efforts otherwise it will be a complete disaster so if you set up this roadmap share it with your with your boss and share it with your with your with your uh, manager because this actually shows them okay there's really bone uh, there's really meat on the bone like you're not just saying okay I want to uh, achieve this uh, and then and uh, he never hears back from you until next year. So you really um, uh, keep him in the loop with all the project steps, all the milestones, and so on and so on. This is a template uh, which you can get after the webinar. Um, there will be a link sent out to you. Uh, so no worries, you can have that uh, template. I, I, I made it for you. The second thing is a bit, uh, forecasting budget based on topics. And this is something I've built and I want to quickly jump into this sheet, which you, by the way, can have after this uh, after this webinar as well. <clears throat> so what it does is uh, actually you can pull out keywords from different tools, but you can pull out um, uh, keywords from search metrics as well. So let's take rankings from your competitor site. Let's say your competitor site is search metrics. You go into the search metrics suite and say, okay, I want to have all the rankings for topic snowboards uh, uh, from your competitor site. So you pull them out, then you put them into this keyword list here. Um, you also uh, pull the search volume of each keyword and the CPC, which uh, which uh, search metrics is given you as well. Um, then what I did here is uh, based on the various position one, two, three, and three to 10, uh, I put in a certain click-through rate. This click-through rate now is based on the uh, uh, on the adv advanced web ranking uh, click-through rate study. But what will be much much more valuable for you is if you generate an average uh, click-through rate based on your rankings you already have. So just jump into Search Console, uh, pull everything out, and then estimate an average click-through rate would be far more accurate than it is here now. So this click-through rate on position number one uh, says that 25% of people show, uh, seeing your result on posi uh, position number one, uh, 25 people are clicking on the result. On pos position two or three will be 15%, and on position three to 10, it's just 5% divided by, the, by, by um, the positions from three to 10, which is seven. So based on this click-through rates, uh, there will be an estimation of traffic, you, you can see it from the uh, formula, which says, okay, for this keyword snowboards uh, with a search volume of 1,905, I have an estimated visits from uh, of 344 per month. And if you then take your own conversion rate, you have you just jump into uh, uh, analytic in Google Analytics and pull out your average conversion rate for this product category or a similar product category, and you put this into here, then it will already uh, um, um, adapt it in, in this list here, in the, in the formula. So based on this uh, traffic and your conversion rate, plus the average basket value you have, you can get this in Google Analytics as well, it estimates a revenue per client based on that keyword. and. As I said, you can do like when you want to launch a new product category, you just pull out like thousands of keywords. You have all this data put in here. As I said, take it's more accurate if you uh, take the average conversion uh, click-through rates you have in, in Search Console, um, and then you have kind of an estimation how much revenue you could generate uh, when you um, uh, focus on this category. And on top here, it actually, uh, Commun uh, um, gathering all the, all the keywords, so sum it up actually, uh, and with this you can go to your uh, manager and say, look, um, I want to focus on snowboards for this winter, and I pulled out some keywords. I want to optimize for these keywords, um, generate 
and, and, the, and, and the revenue per month would be, let's say, 237 per month. With this, a, your manager or the C-level has a much more, uh, has a much better view of what you actually do, do in targeting and what the value, as Christian just mentioned out, will be if he invests his budget into your project. You can do that for transactional keywords as well as for informational uh, keywords if you just have like your e-commerce shop but then you have a, like a blog or a magazine uh, just take into account that uh, the conversion rates will be much lower and maybe the, the average basket value you generated out of evergreen topics will be much lower. Um, just take that into account but I will share that with you after this revenue webinar a link will send to you. So in, if you have set up this, then uh, like it's more kind of a project management approach. But if you have set up this, you have had a clear vision, you had a clear, uh, you have cl a clear objective, you have clear communication, you uh, manifested everything in a project plan, and everybody uh, does know their duties and does know what what to do. Um, then you just do your project, then you wait and see until you see the results. And that's really important. What I learned throughout my career is that you are uh, reporting results directly. So let's say here is it, it's a screenshot from, um, from a competitor, um, uh, competitor analyzers. Uh, just because we did something and we're focusing on certain uh, kind of keywords, we were closing the gap to the competitor's visibility. And this is something uh, a manager on or on sea level loves to see, especially if it's a competitor, um, which is uh, uh, really hard actually to get uh, to get. Um, and if they see that, they're more than happy to give you more budget for the next budget round as well. And then, as you can, uh, uh, as you just uh, did in the beginning, you said, okay, my estimation or my goal will be increasing traffic by 33 percent or 35 percent. You maybe have uh, actually uh, more traffic generated, which is at the end something you definitely have to report uh, and, and 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 have to recap, so that, as I said, the uh, manager and C level know the value of what you have done, and that's something which I, I'm pretty sure you you will experience as well. But in my experience, they were more than happy to give me more money and more budget for the project that I did. And last but not least, sometimes it's, I know it's really hard because um, in discussions with other search marketers as well, they, they always say, okay, it's so hard to prove what actually um, content, if you invest in content marketing, what content actually can bring. Uh, and this is one of my favorite shots from uh, from the publishing side I was working for. What we did here is um, when we were pre-planning content based on seasonality, and then we uh, were actually uh, we, we were publishing it, and we were comparing it to the average of traffic generated on those uh, directories where we were publishing the content. And you can see that some of the topics we were pre-planning had a much more impact had had. A had, had more impact actually as as an average article on that on that um, directory. And this is something you really need to prove. You really need to showcase. Otherwise, nobody will believe you. So this is data you can actually use. And as I said, one of my actually favorite uh, charts. Um, feel feel happy to copy it. Yeah. Thanks, Bjorn, for giving us uh, the insight. So. Uh, for everyone uh, who has questions, please type them in right now. So uh, uh, last but not least, we of course um, just feel happy um, for the ones who are not aware of our software yet because a lot of the things that we want to provide you, like the Excel files, etc., you have um, pre-built tools in the search metrics suite in our platform so that you can use. So um, if you want to go for such metrics uh, to have the KPIs to get more budget and if you want to increase your productivity by having all the data in one place, please feel free to send us an email. Um, Christian Bruchard at searchmetrics.com. You will get a free trial and you will of course get the slides and uh, you will have the um, 
yeah, a sheet that uh, Bjorn has presented. But before going to the questions, um, you have an additional topic, Bjorn. I have an additional topic. I just wanted to mention that we are looking for uh, two senior SEO consultants here based here in Berlin. Uh, so if you know anybody or you feel unhappy or whatever, then uh, just drop Christian a mail or go to the job page on search metrics uh, and we will um, yeah, organize a face-to-face -face meeting. Perfect. Then uh, let's have a look to the questions. So, uh, okay, um, it's a little bit, yeah, no, okay, there is, okay. How do you calculate the traffic value? It's a good question. So, um, we um, have based, um, yeah, woo -woo -woo. We have a very advanced click-through rate model, let's say it like this, based on if a keyword is transactional, informational, um, how many paid ads you have on the search engine wizard page, etc. So we know the search volume, then we know your position, then uh, built on a, a dynamic uh, click-through rate, we know the click-through rate and we can estimate the traffic you have. Then we combine this information with the average CPC for this keyword and then you have the estimated SEO traffic for a specific position or for the position you have. Um, yeah, and then times the average CPC in AdWords and then you know what your organic traffic for this keyword is worth. And if you are a big website ranking for 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 of keyword, we will combine all this information and provide you the traffic value. So, next question. You've showed uh, segmentation by product groups, by market share. Is this a function available in all countries for uh, EN example in Denmark? Yeah, uh, so first uh, of all, it is available for all countries. So the market share we provide, um, you define your markets together with us. So we will find the perfect keyword set for you. Then we will split this in product categories or topics. It depends on your business. Um, so we tag them, we call it, we tag them, and based on this tags, we can um, show you the market share of you, your competitors, and even the ones who are best performing on the tags and that you maybe are not aware of yet. So then we have a next question here. Is this click-through rate or traffic value are impacted by Google PLA? Really good question. Um, I don't think that uh, based on this study, I think that based on this study I just mentioned uh, advanced web ranking, it's already covered in there because what they uh, also shown, I think on the Google product listing ads, it's just 5% uh, of click-through rate. I'm not sure, but you, you can check that up, advanced web ranking uh, study. Uh, but as I said, if you have an average of your uh, click-through rates based on Google Search Console, there will all be already uh, the impact of uh, product listing ads and uh, Google AdWords. So just take your click-through rate, the, the average, it would be more accurate. This would be definitely the most accurate way and for the traffic value like we do it in, and the traffic impact that we uh, display in the search metric suite, uh, we take uh, in account how the search engine wizard page is um, displayed and um, if there is a Google carousel, maps, whatever. So, um, but if you want to rebuild it in an Excel file, uh, we won't give you all uh, the <laughs> uh, metrics you use for this, but yeah, use your search console. Okay, are there some more questions? No worries. Okay. If there are no more questions, uh, yeah, we'd like to say thanks for joining our webinar. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, please contact us to get your free trial and um, we'll set everything for you. So in the questions, also drop us an email, contact us at LinkedIn. If you know someone who's looking for an SEO uh, senior consultant um, position in Berlin, we are also very uh, happy uh, to get your feedback. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, it was fun, guys, and um, maybe see and hear you at the next webinar.